get another round of applause for cat daddies, please? <laughs> now, audience, these mics are up here at the front. These two, please feel free to come up and ask any questions you'd like. Uh, my very generally, why cats? Why daddies? <laughs> and what inspired you to bring the two together uh, for your first feature? Well, um, I've always been a cat lover, obviously, the way I'm dressed. <laughs> I'll, I've always, I mean, social media has kind of changed the game a bit, and men are now sharing selfies of themselves with their cats and very proudly doing so. And uh, I, I was just kind of obsessed with seeing um, images of men with their cats and, you know, and also my husband, when we were dating, he was not a cat person at all. And then one day a cat found him and the rest is history. So I saw him the before and after, um, you know, becoming, you know, a cat guy. And I, it, I just, it just made me think there must be so many other men who don't know that they could have a bond with a cat. They've been conditioned for so long to, to love dogs. And so, um, I, I just thought maybe this could help with the overpopulation crisis and if we can get more hearts and homes to open up. Um, also, I just, I just wanted to make something that I would love working on, and so I'm pretty passionate about cats. I know that this is something that I, as an audience member, would want to see. I think you're right, because I didn't realize I was a cat dad until I was like maybe two years ago, actually. Oh. So I think you're right. Uh, and how did you connect with the subjects in the film? So I found most of them through Instagram. Uh, I was already following many of them, like Gold Kitty and Flame and some of the others. And so I thought it would be great to sort of see them on the big screen, um, kind of bigger than life. And, and then David was actually just a tip from somebody that contributed to my Kickstarter. Um, he was, one of his friends was like, yeah, hey, I know this guy, and he seems like he'd be perfect for your movie. And I was just like, well, I, I've already finished casting. I'm really not looking for more. And, and I, ha you know, I already had a plan. And, um, but then once we met him and talked to him, and he, it just seemed like he really wanted to do it, and we thought that we could somehow help him somehow his situation with this film and so um, we just couldn't not have him he just he just takes such good care of his cat um, probably better than himself and uh, that was just really touching to us so we had to had to make that work and you shot some before the pandemic and during did that shift the narrative at all for you during the process even on a from a production standpoint or editing to Dave so you can answer as well yeah, I mean, it changed everything on every standpoint. Um, you know, originally this was going to be a very light, cute film. Uh, you know, I, I, I went into it not having that much of a plan, um, but definitely the pandemic and everything that happened in 2020, like, kind of took the film into a different direction a bit. Um, because I was seeing, like, these common through lines where you know, you have Nathan, the cat lady, he's, he's got this revolving door of roommates, and it seems like every time he loses a roommate, he gains a new cat, and, and then you have Jeff and Aaron, who are professionals in the Bay Area, and they're having, you know, they're struggling to find enough space so that they can be roommates together and have their cats, and, um, and that was like a, just a common theme, and then you have David and Lucky, who are also have very few options with their situation. Um, so I was just seeing this again and again, and I think that just with everything that was happening, um, it, it just seemed like just natural to sort of lean into that. I mean, it's still a movie that explores, I, I guess, um, m you know, m masculinity and our gender roles, but, you know, I think no matter what, I think that is still there subtextually, and so we just went with it. Also, um, it, was a, it was a really difficult year to film because we actually had other cat dads we were supposed to film but lost them either because we couldn't travel to them or 
they lost interest just because of everything that was going on, understandably. Um, and then we couldn't tr get back to New York. So, so, so spent the whole year trying to get back to New York. And what ended up happening was like Rob, ha Rob was already on the East Coast. And so he would go back and get, you know, footage with David. Um, and, and Dave and I were just home in LA, just on the phone. And Rob sometimes had to do sound and camera and pretty much everything. Um, that was the only way we were going to finish, so. Dave, do you have any thoughts about the editing perspective? Yeah, um, it, was, it was a lot of fun to have that much cat footage. Um, one of the things that I asked Rob to do as the, as the director of photography was to shoot a lot of the cats in slow motion just because, um, you know, they have so many movements that are so quick that uh, they don't really register when you see them in real time, but there's an interesting beauty to the, to the way you see it when it's slowed down and you can kind of unpack the subtleties of their expressions and everything. And then in editing, you know, we would sometimes speed that back up um, or just find ways to, to kind of find the right tone uh, with all the different s stories. So I'd say trying to kind of navigate the tone between the, the lighter stories and the more harrowing stories was the biggest editing challenge. And speaking of cat footage, I could watch those shots for hours. So Robert, I want to ask, what was the collaborative process like? I mean, well, so shooting in, in general on this film uh, kind of involved me uh, getting on the ground quite a bit, getting that cat's eye view. Um, but uh, uh, it was always great working with both of these guys. Um, it was such a fun film to shoot. I, I, I would keep doing it forever, so, <laughs> uh, you know. We get enough of this, we get Cat Daddies too, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, was it difficult to herd the cats for the shots? Uh, you know, herding cats is easy, of course. That's what they, think. That's what they say. No. Um, Pretty much, I, we tried to, you know, come in and like, uh, you know, not be too imposing. Um, it was really mostly just the three of us, uh, you know, at any given time, uh, and you know, we didn't have too much in terms of, uh, you know, lighting setup or anything like that. Uh, so, I'd kind of come in with the camera, introduce myself to the cat, not, you know, take it kind of slow, uh, and then really just kind of keep filming, <laughs> provide. Dave with just hours of <laughs> slow motion cat footage. Uh, and I have one more question, unless someone in the audience has a question. Uh, my, uh, is documentary your first love? Is it something you want to continue doing? And, you know, maybe talk about that. Uh, it's definitely my first love, but this is my first documentary. I've mostly been working and dabbling in narrative. And this, I don't know, I, I've always, I l actually love watching doctories, documentaries more, so I don't know why I never got, in, you know, d directed something like this. Um, but I think just the subject matter grabbed me, and I just had, I just, I could imagine it, and I just, you know, it w the thought wouldn't go away, and I just, I don't know, had to do it, so. Amazing. Well, thank you, Cat Daddies. And oh, oh, oh go one for more it. thing. Yes. Oh, so I do have the uh, cat bandanas if you want. And I also forgot that we also brought cat food samples from uh, Bobby Flay's cat food line. So I have some samples, cat food samples if you'd like. And the guys will be holding the samples and I'll have the bandana. So just catch us if you want one. Awesome. Thank you so much. In the lobby, in the lobby. Enjoy the rest of the festival. Thank you.